keep up with time in Sunday school too much because I'm teaching every week. So, you know, if I don't finish, I'll just have the next week. Um, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy 32.4. Um, <clears throat> it's been a long time since I've, I've been able to teach up here. I, I taught one time here. <clears throat> it's been like three and a half years. It's actually been like it's three years, nine months, 15 days. Not that I'm really keeping up, but that's <laughs> 1,386 days or 33,264 hours since I've been asked to teach. <clears throat> I think it has something to do with um, having the plunger. I don't know if y'all remember, I had I, did, I taught a lesson on tools and I had a plunger in the, the pulpit. Maybe that had a little to do with it, I don't know. I thought it was maybe going to be a one-hit wonder, but I, I got invited back. <clears throat> um, are y'all at the text? Yeah. Everybody there? Psalms 62-7? Uh, Psalm. Are y'all there? 60, Psalm 62-7. Is that what I'm telling no. Okay, sorry, sorry. Psalm 62-7. <laughs> All right, so as you know, some of you may know, may not, I'm a structural engineer. Uh, my company is Solid Rock Structural. Um, so... I have uh, business cards, and on the business cards is, is this, is this uh, verse of text here. Um, Luke 6, 47 through 49. Are y'all there? Luke, where are y'all at? Luke 7, 47 through 49. When y'all get there, let me know, okay? Okay, so part of my work as a structural engineer is designing foundations. Uh, <clears throat> so that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit about today. I know that kind of thrills some of you. I think uh, when I brought the tools up, I think it was Miss Betty that said, you know, when you started, I was like, you're teaching on that. What? Uh, I'm not, probably not even going to listen. So, but she in, enjoyed it anyway. So hopefully <clears throat> you'll get something out of the, the foundation lesson. So, for a typical house, you know what a foundation is, right? Your, your footing. Your, you, you typically, for a house, you're going to have like a two foot wide by one foot thick, eight inches thick footing. And it, that's, that's put in. And that's not really needed. You don't need to design that. I mean, that's just a standard thing that everybody puts in. Um, Luke 6, 47 to 49. But for heavier loads you actually have to calculate how big the footing has to be. I've, I've calculated before, for like just a column, I've calculated like a 15 by 15 by 4 foot thick footing just to be able to hold up a building. So I'll take math and, and, and figure out what, what size footings need to be. Um, I just had to do one in Charleston the other day, and it was 10 by 10 by 3 foot thick. It was like a four-story building down in Charleston. Uh, so let me... Keep an eye on time here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so today I want to talk a little bit about foundation. So I guess everyone's there, right? Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Are you there? Matthew, are y'all there? I know the crowd's down and y'all, you know, maybe some of you coming off COVID, but are y'all with me? What is going on? Are y'all not there yet? <laughs> If you don't know this about me, I, I'm kind of annoying. My, my wife said that's my only talent. And so I was just messing with y'all this morning. <clears throat> but Matthew 7, I promise this is the last one. This is where we're going to get the text from. Matthew 7. And really, those other ones that I sent you to, they're similar to what we're going to talk about. It was talking about the rocks. So um, I really wasn't sending you somewhere that you shouldn't go, but we weren't going to read those. Uh, Matthew 7, 24 to 27. All right, so now is everybody there? I feel like the, the boy that cried wolf. You know, y'all aren't going to turn anywhere else, I tell you today, right? <laughs> All right, 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that <clears throat> heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. 
And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Um, so today we're going to talk about foundations, footing, stuff that I get, I, I really get excited about, but, you know, most people probably don't. When I told my wife what I was teaching about, she's, oh no, you're teaching all that? I hope you got some jokes. Well, at, at the point, at that time, I didn't have any jokes, but I wrote some specifically for this class. So, <clears throat> here's my jokes. All right. Um, why did the house not go to the ball? Because Scott built it. No, that was not funny. <laughs> See, it's a joke. It's supposed to be funny. All right, so why did the house not go to the ball? She didn't have any slippers for her footers. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so if you didn't like that one, I got, an, I got another one. Then you, okay, you ready? Okay. <clears throat> what is tall, has a bad foundation, and has pepperonis all over it? The Leaning Tower of Pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at that slide. Scott Michael said, I know you're not going to tell the jokes in, in church. <laughs> he, she, he said, they'll go over well at a, one of those nerdy engineering conventions you go to, but they'll, they'll say those. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Um, so other names for, you know, foundation here. Footings, footers. Here in the South, Louis, this, this one's for you. They call them footings. So I'll get a call from a contractor saying, uh, Inspector done, done failed me. My footings 22 inches wide and it's supposed to be 24. Can you do anything for me? So it's footings. So that's what they, they call it a lot of times. So they, that's all the same thing. Foundation, footings, footers. Um, <clears throat> so that's what we're talking about. Um, what's supporting the foundation? What's supporting that footing? <laughs> Uh, before I can size a footing, um, I'll get a soils report. I'll get a soils report from, from an engineer. He goes down, bores into the soil, and figures out what bearing capacity and, and everything that the, these soil, soils have. Um, that information gives me what I need to, to actually calculate the size of the footing. Um, sometimes um, you're on bedrock or on good soil. And this is what the Bible is talking about here in our text, is, is being building on good soil, good bedrock. Um, when, we have bed, when we have good soil, the bearing capacity is way up. It'll support a lot of stuff, and we don't, we don't have many problems. Our, our footings can get smaller. We, can, we, we have you know, a lot of, you know, the whole building, everything takes, it takes on a different persona because it's, it's a lot easier to build on. Um, so the, the, the scripture here is talking about the wise man building on the rock. What's the rock? Jesus Christ, right? That's, that's where we need to build our, our foundation on is, is Jesus Christ. Verse 25 says, The rain descended, the floods came, the winds beat upon that house. There's so many things that can come upon us in our life. I mean, there is, I mean this life's hard. I mean, we get beat on. I mean, there's just stuff that happens. And um, if you're... If you don't have that foundation, you don't have that rock, you're not built on Jesus Christ, I don't, I don't know how, they, how, how people make it. I mean, it's hard enough knowing the Savior, knowing, having that relationship with God, but, but people that don't, I mean, how do they make it? How do they make it? Um, sometimes I'll get a soil report back, and um, I'll, we'll find out the soil is not real good to build on. Um, if someone to, was to build on it, they're going to have problems. They're, they're, you, know, and, you know, settling issues... When you build the house, you're, you're going to have doors that that start scraping that you know they don't open freely. That's that's what that's the what happens when you have bad soil and, and your house starts settling. Um, sometimes there'll be cracks in the house. Um, sometimes under extreme conditions, the building will just com collapse completely. Um, think about your you know if, if you ever built a little sand castle. I know you have a little sand castle at the beach and. You, you build that, and it looks so great, and then the waves come up, what happens? It's just destroyed, right? That's what, that's what happens when, the, the, when you build on, on soils that aren't, aren't quite uh, where they need to be. Um, the, the Lord's using this little simple example of, of what to build on and, and driving a point home of what our life should be built on. Um, <clears throat> building on, on bad, bad soils akin to just not trusting in Jesus Christ. You, you're asking for failure. You're definitely... You're probably going to have failure in this life. 
the afterlife, you're definitely going to have failure. Yeah. You're, you're going to hell. You're, 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 it's, it's, it's over for you. But you're going to have, but probably going to have more failure in this life too. Um, <clears throat> a person doesn't build on the rock, he's destined for hell. Now, we, we talked about sand a little bit. There is a, a, a thing called quicksand. It's an it's a, a interesting little thing that soils, they can become quick. And I know you've all heard of quicksand. My teacher, when I was like in elementary school, the teacher said, don't go down over there in the woods because there's quicksand down there. These teachers were lying. They, I knew they were lying then. I didn't believe them, but I, I didn't really do... I, I did what the teacher said anyway. But they didn't want us to go down in the woods, so they said there was quicksand down there. So you've all heard of quicksand. And it's kind of mythical, and you know, like, is, is it real? Well, it is real in a sense, but it doesn't suck you down. What it does is the the sand, um, it, it it the water table is up in the sand. It's called liquefaction, and the, the water's up. And then when you get a seismic event like an earthquake or something, the bottom just falls out. So that's the problem with sand um, that that um, you don't know about. Um, I've had a couple jobs my whole career that, that have had this potential problem. Um, I've had to design around it and we've had to put in deep, deep foundation and everything else. Um, without that knowledge though, uh, the res results can be devastating. I mean, you can have, I've read five story buildings have collapsed because of liquefaction, because of quicksand. Um, <clears throat> everything seems fine. Because when you build on, when you're standing on the sand at the beach, you think it's fine, right? I mean, you're solid, and that's what they do is they build on this, and then the waves come or the earthquake event, and then bam, all of a sudden, it just drops out and you and you and you collapse. Um, I think a lot of people have built their life on quicksand. They think everything's just fine. They're going through this life. They built a good career. They built a good family. They built everything seems to be going good, but one day. Bam, it's going to happen. Either something in this life is going to happen or they're going to die and, and go straight to hell. That's what's going to happen. So that's the danger and the destructive power of not trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, there are different types of foundations. So in the real world, well, the foundations we're talking about, there's, there's all different kinds. There's like a wall footing foundation. All around the perimeter of the building, there's a wall foundation. This is just a square footing rectangular footing that goes around that that supports the, the building uh, you just dig a trench pour your concrete in very simple um, then there's a pier footing foundation underneath your house if you've got a crawl space all spread throughout there's little square concrete footings that have a little pier that goes up to support your house that's called a pier footing um, a pile foundation when you get start getting a little bit of bad soil when it's not as good as what it what it's supposed to be you have something called pile foundations. Um, these are like wood posts or steel, concrete, something that's driven down in the ground. They may drive them, drive them 60 to 150 feet or something to support the structure because your soil up top's bad, but you get way down to the bedrock or something else, and, and this is what you, is used to do it. Um, you got a caisson. They just drill a big old hole in the ground, pour concrete down. Um, a helical, helical pier, you, um, it's, a, it's got a helix on it, and it's drilled, it, it's kind of screwed down into the ground to support the foundation. Um, you have a geop here, which is uh, multiple holes every so often, and then they pack a uh, stone in it. So it's, an, it's, a, it's a way to amend the soil. Instead of just right where the footing is that supports the building, they drive these things in every five to ten feet, and then that's supposed to, it, it packs out on the sides of the soil and, and just makes all of the soil better. And it kind of uh, lends itself to a thought of, of Christians. You know, if we were all saved, if we were, our whole community was saved, it would be more likely that we were going to be able to touch another person, an unsaved person, and let them know how to be saved. And so this, that's what, that's the idea I get with the, this, the, the geopiers, that it's just trying to amend the whole area. Um, people's foundations people have different foundations too of course number one is putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ Amen. building on that, that, that right foundation that's, that's the yeah. number one foundation yeah. but some people 
put their faith in their family. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, because my family's in church, I'm going to get go to heaven. I had I had a coworker one time, and he, I witnessed to him, and he was an atheist, and he said, you know, if there's anything to this, I'm going to go to heaven because of my grandmother. She was a praying woman. I'm going because of her. And there's so many people out there that that's what they're putting their foundation in. They they they're putting their faith in trusting that their family has it right, and they're they're going to go to heaven because of that. Um, if we had young people in here today, that would be that's a, a huge thing to teach them. There's some young people right there. You're not going to heaven because your mommy and daddy are saved and going to heaven. You have to put you have to trust in the Lord Jesus yourself. Um, some people put their faith in other religions. Mm -hmm. You know, there's thousands and thousands of people in this category. I mean, they, there's hundreds of religions out there, and they're, you know, people are putting their trust and faith in that. Um, all over the world. The problem is, it's not the right foundation. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. <clears throat> Some people um, say you don't need a foundation. Uh, people like that are just crazy. I mean, can you imagine going out and building a house with no foundation? You just start you just start putting your wood on the ground and just start building up. Now I've seen some crazy stuff out there because I go out and inspect, you know, who you know, whatever kind of failure, and I've seen some crazy things, but typically there's some type of foundation. I mean some, typically they're trying to do something. Um, but some people say you don't need that. Can you imagine building um, Building your house on the foundation, so that's like saying, like the atheist saying, "I don't need, I don't need God. I'm not, I've got everything." And, and the problem is nowadays they've they've lived their life, and uh, there's so many other things in life to to take them away from God, and they're just they're living their life, and they don't see a need for it. Um, <clears throat> But the, the you know you build a house on it, it's gonna, the floor joists are going to rot. It's not going to be level. There's going to be all kinds of problems, and that's what happens if you don't trust in the Lord. What happens if you have a bad foundation? So I go out to houses all the time um, and inspect cracks on it, and I, I thought you know this is a Christian company I'm running, but if I wasn't, my you know a good logo would be uh, I'll inspect your crack. But, you know, I'm not going to put that on the thing. But I, I go out and I look at... And most of the time it cracks in... <laughs> my family's... <laughs> okay, so the um, the cracks I'm talking about are in bricks. A lot of times they'll, they'll have cracks in their brick foundation, brick brick wall or whatever. And I'll go out and, and inspect that. Um, Y'all probably, if you have brick house, you probably have cracks in, in the house somewhere. You, you probably just haven't ever noticed it, but you probably have have cracks. Um, did y'all ever notice there's a house on Old Mountain Road a few years back? Um, I can't remember where it is compared to y'all's house, but it, it's down the road there, and, and it had cracks all over it. I mean, it was bad. And it was so bad that at one point they just took all the brick off, and they started digging down and, and trying to repair it. Um, so there are three outcomes for a bad foundation. Um, Structure failure and collapse. So if you leave, a, 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 I go out to these houses and there might be a foundation problem or whatever. And if it's failing, it, it, it could fail and just collapse at some point eventually. There was a, a tower in South Padre. It's called the South Padre Leaning Tower. It was 31 foot condominium, but it was 31 foot tall. And it started leaning and it was leaning over a foot in just a year's time during construction. And they ended up having to tear the whole thing down because they knew it was going. It was it was not going to last. So, first thing is structural failure. That that's what can happen from a bad, bad foundation. I liken this to a person that never does get saved. They're they're looking for failure. The life's totally destroyed, and then this eternity is spent in hell. Number two, what can happen with a bad foundation is very intense movement of the of the foundation. So you all know about the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? The you know this is a prime example of a very intense movement of the foundation. Um, this this it was built on poor soil. That was what was wrong with it, and it started leaning. And so it it started leaning, um, you know, right after it was building built. I mean, it was like they were on the second floor and they were they were already leaning. But they they would build this thing and then 
I guess money and everything else. They they waited a hundred years and then they built some more, and then they built stop and then they built some more, and and so each time you know if the thing's leaning, they would try to straighten it up and go straight. So the leaning tower of Pisa actually is kind of like a banana shape. It's not straight. It's not just leaning. It's it's like a banana shape. Uh, but anyway, that this this is a great example of how how you know how. You, you can have a lot of movement in a fa- because the foundation's not right. I, you know, I liken this to a person that's in the world and not de- and totally destroyed his life. He is, he's tried to get his life back on court. You know, he's got this self-help. He's tried to get his life back on his own. He's on the bad foundation. He's not trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's just trying everything he can to, to do good. But he's just failing. He may be on drugs. He may be a drunk. He may... You know, just all kinds of scars from this life, and it's visible. You can see this person. We've seen these people out there, and we know what they need is the proper foundation. We can tell. It's just like that tower that's leaned over. Um, so there is hope for this person, though. This type of foundation, can't you can at any point, if the Lord is not, you know, closed off to you, you can get this foundation. The the Tower of Pisa was uh, so it had leaned it, most of the time. It was like ten feet out or something. Well, back in the nineties, I don't know if y'all have read any of this, but it had leaned almost sixteen feet out, and it was moving faster than ever before. It was going to collapse. There was no way around it. It was going to collapse. So what they did was uh, they the engineers came in and um, they worked on it and got it got it straightened back up um so now they, they actually made it where it's only 10 feet again so it was, it was like this and they brought it back in some so there's always hope and, and you know if there's breath in you and you you want to call out to the lord you can always do that no matter how messed up your foundation is no matter how much your life's messed up um you haven't gotten you know where you where he can't heal you um if you are a Christian, say Christian, and you've gotten off track, you, you're not so far off track, you can't go and call on Him and get back on, yeah. on His plan, get closer to Him. Um, there will be scars, though. Right. Yeah. The, that, that banana shape of the, the leaning tower is still there. There's scars from that. I mean, they could have made the whole thing straight, but it was still going to be a banana shape. There's going to be scars when you're, you mess your, yourself up with this life. Yeah. Um, Number three, I don't even remember what, what uh, we were talking about here. What was it? What happens to bad, bad foundation? So it can be collapse. Number three is small stair-step cracking or horizontal cracking. Some issues uh, don't really look intense, and some people don't really think there's much to it. Um, but, you know, I, I can look at it and I know if that's a problem or not if your foundation failing or not or, or whatever so sometimes it's real small small things um i like this to a person sitting on a church pew their whole life they go to church they go to sunday school from the outside everybody else looking at them thinks everything's good they can't tell i mean these these some of these cracks are, are so minor you don't really know you you it takes somebody who really knows what they're looking at to, to know if there's a problem um that can be you, You're just sitting there all your life, and you you know there's something not right, but everybody else can't tell it. Um, these are just as a big of a problem as as any of the other other cracks, the ones that are are, are more more visible. You know, sometimes you know the, the drug addict, everybody knows he he's on drugs. He we know he's got a problem. We know he's not safe. But the person sitting on the church pew all their life. They think everything's good. You know, I sat on church pew until I was 19 or so. And that was the first time I feel like, that was the first time I ever heard the, a clear gospel message. I was in a Methodist church. And so that was the first time I, I felt like I really heard a, a clear gospel message. But um, that, that's one of the problems is, is just little small stair-step cracks, not, not, not real major looking. How do you repair a bad foundation? Um, when you're building a house and you notice a foundation issue, like if you're you've just got your footing in and it it starts failing, or you have your wall built up and it starts failing, well, it's not really that big of a deal. 
you you can dig some more concrete down into the footing, fix that, that repair. It's not really that big of a deal. As construction moves on, it gets harder and harder to repair. When you've got your whole house built, mm -hmm. then it's a big deal to come out there and repair, repair it. Um, <clears throat> for the leaning tower, they put counterweights. They had to put big lead counterweights on there to stabilize the thing. Um, and then they dug soil out on that side. So instead of raising the side that had lowered, they dug out on the side that was high to balance the, the tower. Um, <clears throat> for most houses I go out to, the repair is to put in a helical pier. Like if they're if the foundation's failing, they'll put in a helical pier. They'll screw this big this pier down 10, 15 feet, and then kind of jack the house up. And so that will give it support. Um, but the point I want to make here is that it's easier and cheaper to get things fixed early on. Yeah. Um, they knew about that t leaning tower at the second floor level. They knew they had a problem then. It had, done, it had already deflected so much, they knew they had a problem. If they had stopped right there and fixed it, well, we wouldn't have the leaning tower. You know, it would be a, uh, an icon, but they wouldn't have the expense of trying to trying, trying to repair the thing or it, it falling. So um, they had numerous attempts to repair it through the years, <clears throat> and I don't know what the cost on that was, but the final bill in 2000 or whenever they fixed it, it was $30 million to repair. So that's the, it's totally different. If they had just fixed the thing to begin with, it wouldn't have cost much at all, but they waited and waited and waited. Our spiritual foundation is like that too. It's much easier to fix and get right the younger you are. Um, a young person you know, is still in their construction phase mm -hmm. of life. They're, they're uh, Isaac and um, what's your name? Y'all are in your construction phase of life. You got it? You know, you're young. Get it right now. That not only just trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, but giving your life to Him doing his will, working for him. Amen. That that yeah. is better to do young in life. Um, go ahead and trust in him now. The longer you wait, the less likely it is you're going to get saved. The less likely it is that you're going to do anything for him. Do it now. Get on, on board now. Um, how many old farts do you know that, that get saved? Not many. I mean, it's, it's just it's true. It, it, it typically doesn't happen. It's it's a lot of times the younger crowd that, that gets saved. Um, so the houses that you know that, that need helicals, I was telling you that have helicals, they're they're a thousand dollars a piece. So the, the cost to, to repair these things is immense. Um, so get on board, get your life right now, get on the the, the foundation now. Um, some cracks aren't structural. Uh, so I've got some houses that have cracks and they're not even a foundation problem. Um, you can have a perfectly good foundation and you can still have cracks in your, your building. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> bricks very brittle. And so when it's heated by the sun and then it cools, and heat, that causes stresses and it'll cause cracks in the brick. It's called thermal expansion crack. Um, it's, it's, so the only thing you can do is put in a relief joint. You got this crack, so we, we just saw a joint put a saw joint all the way through it, put elastic material in there so the, the building can move then, right? Um, it doesn't look good. The homeowner doesn't like it, but um, it's better better than a random crack. That's why we put cracks in the sidewall. You see the, the straight straight cracks. That's that's because concrete's going to crack, and so we make it crack at those joints. So that's what an expansion crack is. <clears throat> Been out to so many houses that they, they're so stressed about their cracks. They're, they're like, oh, no, it's going to fail. And then I tell them, no, this, this is not anything major. And so then, the, you know, a letter from me makes them feel better. I hope I'm right, you know, unintentionally. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, that, that's what those are. You can, just because your foundation is built on Jesus Christ doesn't mean you won't have cracks. You are going to have problems. Yeah. You're gonna, you can be saved. You can be doing everything right. You can be reading your Bible 15 hours a day. You're still going to have problems. <clears throat> it, it's going to happen. The, the, we live, the, the stresses of life are going to come up. Something's going to happen. You're going to have cracks, bumps, bruises. Everything's going to happen. And <clears throat> you can't control that. And you're going to be left with scars. That, that is going to happen. Yeah. So... It's better than not being on a good foundation, though. You need to be on the good foundation. Um, 
And John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in ye, me, ye might have peace. In the world ye <clears throat> shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I know that he was talking to his disciples, but it's for us as Christians. I mean, we're going to have problems. He, he, yeah. he tells us we're going to have problems. Um, I think of Paul when, on that. He, you know, he prayed three times for the thorn in the flesh would be removed. Mm -hmm. God answered, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. He didn't take it away. He just said, my grace is sufficient. Um, I picture God just taking and, and cutting a control joint, an expansion joint in Paul and saying, I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to put you this joint in there. It's not going to be pretty, but I'm going to put this joint in there so you can deal with it. And that's what God does. God allows us to be able to deal with stuff. Um, the foundation might be right, but the rest of the structure might have issues. One, one final thought on buildings and foundations. Um, when you go to build a house, you have a set of blueprints. Actually, they're not blue anymore. They're black and white because the printing technology is a lot better, and so they print them out black and white now. But anyway, the plan calls for you to install a 12-inch beam. And you decide... And I've had this. The contractor just said, you know what, I'm going to put in an 8-inch beam. I, I, you're going to have problems. What's, what's going to happen? Robbie's going to go out there and going to, going to fail you. And, um, but you're going to have problems. You don't follow the plans. You will have problems. Um, when you get saved, you're on the good foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to build the rest of your life on what God says. God's given us a set of blueprints. The Bible his word, he gives us the set of blueprints. We are supposed to live by his set of rules. Um, so you need to build your, your house. So if you live according to the Bible, build your life on, on his instructions, it won't be like you're building, doing an 8-inch beam instead of a 12-inch beam. <clears throat> so you will have problems, but be on a good foundation. And in conclusion, I don't have a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a page that says conclusion because I felt like I needed one. But um, I guess I, I guess if I was to have a conclusion, it would be uh, build your life on Jesus Christ and follow Him. Amen. Build on a good foundation. Amen. Thanks.